Welcome everyone to Unscripted Coding. You'll see here that I have an Oculus Quest 2 today. It's a VR headset, uh, not the latest and greatest. You could get one of these used fairly cheaply. But the question I have today is can I just put on this headset and start working um, right here. Can I start writing code in Visual Studio Code and, you know, get work done? It's, it's a big question and I had dedicated a few videos to this before when I had an Oculus Quest 1. And the long story short back then was that there are a number of drawbacks, one of which was that the resolution of the Quest 1 wasn't quite good enough. But, the Quest 2 has a much more modern uh, set of screens and much more modern resolution. Now, it's not going to compare to the Quest 3 or the Vision Pro, but when I put this on and I am looking at a screen, it is more than enough to actually see the text and, and read it with clarity. I have nothing here where I feel like it's blurry or unworkable. So that makes it a huge leap above the Quest 1 already. The Quest 2, of course, has a uh, higher speed. You know, it, it's a more modern device. Uh, I, I think the straps were absolutely terrible, so I have this new Halo strap. But in general, you know, the Quest 2 is faster, more updated, has a better screen, and in theory, should do a better job. Quest 1, I said, no, there's really little chance of somebody doing this more than a curiosity. No one is going to put on a Quest 1 and, and do full-time work on it. But the Quest 2 has had me change my mind. There are a few stubborn folks who will possibly, possibly use this for work. So today is just an update of those videos and to talk about the best method that I found. First of all, we had tried tools like Immersed VR and Horizon Work. Today, we are going with the easiest solution and I think the most viable solution, uh, which is using a web browser. Today, you have Visual Studio Code right in front of you that has an all online interface. You can, of course, also get uh, Microsoft Office or Google uh, Docs all on the web. And so other than the fact that there's this ugly bar on top, um, I think it's quite workable to have uh, your browser be your, your main workplace. So for me, having three browsers very much like working with three giant monitors. And let me tell you quickly about my setup as well here. This isn't like Immersed VR where I needed a computer to, to make this running. Uh, all I have here is my headset right here. Um, it looks wired, but that's only to capture the footage. You could have this as a standalone headset and of course a Bluetooth keyboard and a Bluetooth mouse. In theory, I could slip all these th these things into a backpack, go to a coffee shop, look like an utter dork, but be able to sit and start working. Uh, whereas if I was using more traditional tools like grabbing a laptop, I'd have to deal with only having one monitor. Or uh, if I wanted to use immersed VR, for example, I needed a laptop in front of me as well. So this is a... a a solution. I'm not going to say it's a great solution, but it does give you the giant screen to be able to work uh, productively. Now, speaking of screens, I find it amazing that there are people that still work with one screen. But for me, I usually have uh, YouTube or Netflix running on the side, just a bit of background noise. Uh, I've muted it, but just purely as a sample here, um, this is, for example, running some gentle music on the side. Uh, I would normally have one main workplace. Uh, this might be a Word document I'm working on or some code. And finally, on the side, I might have, you know, Stack Overflow uh, or Wikipedia or, or something to 
uh, get answers, uh, to, to do research, to pull up different things. Or I might have, you know, two different documents side to side. You'll see earlier that uh, I'm able to resize this as well. So uh, sometimes I might have this, uh, you know, quite narrow and long for, for YouTube. Uh, this isn't quite the size I would have it at, but let's say like this. And you know what, let's go with uh, Wikipedia and search up uh, Canadian Parliament as a question here. Um, the beautiful part is you can resize this. So for example, if you have a PDF, this is a great way to um, great way to have a long document right here uh, and maybe your Word document right here. So long PDF on this side, document right here. It looks really good for you to work side by side here. Uh, again, the clarity on the Quest 2 is fantastic and I imagine something like the Quest 3 will only get even better. So I can uh, zoom out uh, here zoom out and this one starting to get a little uncomfortable but I could see exactly what it says so if I was debugging this wouldn't be how I'd write my code but if I was debugging and trying to look at a lot of code at once this is one way of doing it okay uh, you could see very oddly that's me in the mirror I'm obviously sitting down but they have no idea how my legs look right now okay uh, so Next bit is uh, FitzBuzz. I, I could just write a bit of code and, and start working here uh, pretty seamlessly, uh, pretty simply. The really cool thing that I don't think was available in the earlier updates is uh, this pass-through. Now, Quest 1 always had this, but now that I've gotten a Quest 2 and tried this again, you'll see that uh, the screens are still visible. The browser is still on top of everything. So over here, you'll see this is my monitor normally. And I could perhaps very cleverly kind of bring these and resize these browsers to match, sorry, match my screens. I have my microphone right here, but it's kind of interesting because you could see my hands now and I could kind of just keep working like this and maybe, you know, grab a drink. Um, you'll find that this is not really going to work all that well because of the plastic. So if you are going to do this, I recommend a straw, which I've done in the past. Um, so long story short, I found that the browser is a, a really reasonable and good way to work on the Oculus Quest. And I have actually done it before to, to bring this and a keyboard just to be able to get a couple of screens running because sometimes you, you just need to be able to look over here, look over here, here, there, and, and see multiple things at once. And so this is a great way of doing it. But the, the one major, major problem that still exists that makes it impractical for me to do this every day other than worrying about my eyes is that um, um, the browser is a is a mobile browser. I'll tell you why that matters quite a bit here. So if I wanted to select text uh, on a computer browser, you know, I just click and drag, right? Um, but but I'm I'm clicking and I'm dragging, and it's it's pretending I, I'm using a finger, not not a mouse. And so when I'm dragging, it's it's just moving the screen around. Now, if I needed to select text, I'd have to hold it and then drag, very much like your phone or tablet. And then you know I can control copy, and I might have you know, text over here equals triple, triple, slash, I think Alt C to word wrap. And, and there you go, you know, I can copy and paste, that's just fine. But um, the, the problem is it's not as intuitive if I wanted to uh, copy and paste, and that's been a real barrier for me. 
it everything is just a little bit on because it's expecting you to be you know pressing holding on to the word holding on to the word and then dragging and and it makes it very difficult so for example for code i i often want to uh, select an entire block but what i found i've been doing is just you know shift and you know going up and and then deleting it and then typing you know uh input equals something else hello world and then i might print oh see i can't do it again muscle memory is pretty annoying uh input of course it appears too early so i gotta go and x out and move down here now it's not the end of the world and i suspect that if you're really determined to do it you'd be able to it's just not the most fun now uh you can blow this up really really quite large so uh now i have the equivalent for of probably standing right in front of a 60 inch tv here uh and trying to code now i would never do that uh, that seems awful, but I might stretch it long uh, just to be able to see more lines up and down. Let me just zoom in a bit further and, and be able to look at it. Now, having it kind of dynamically resize is, is actually one of the major pluses here. Um, that, that I've really enjoyed at looking at this. And for me, I think for coders, this kind of really is problematic because I tend to rewrite lots of blocks of code a lot. But if I'm reading three or four PDFs and doing some research, so, you know, having three Wikipedia pages and maybe a notepad, let's, let's just pretend this is a notepad and I'm just taking notes here. Uh, Parliament of Canada has three parts and and I might search up uh, Google over here uh, google.com and say uh, who is who is the king of Canada uh, I'd be able to do research fairly efficiently here. Uh, it wouldn't be the nicest formatted text, but to just keep taking notes, uh, the current king, Charles III, uh, uh, the Senate, the House of Commons. I'd be able to take this all back later and reformat it or read it and turn it into a document. So um, overall, it's it's... It's workable, it, it really is workable and it makes you very excited about how the future will work. But the the major jump is the resolution from the Quest 1 to Quest 2. I hear the Quest 3 is even sharper, but in practice you don't notice because generally you're not really squinting all that hard at, at the individual pixels. I, I realize you guys can't see that I'm squinting, but uh, just to look at it. Um, anyways, I think, I think that's all I wanted to say on the topic here. Uh, just a quick update. I, I don't think very many people are going to consider this, you know, a great viable option, but if you have an Oculus, it's interesting. It, it really is, uh, an interesting way to go about it. So, uh, Maybe we'll see something better with the Vision Pro. Maybe we'll see you know more updates to, to put a real browser onto one of these devices. But for now, um, it, it's an interesting compromise, and we could see you know that uh, Visual Studio Code right here, uh, seeing your hands, being able to pass through and see things around you in real life, albeit in black and white for the Quest 2, uh, is is going to make it very possible for us to wear one of these into a Starbucks and, and start working with giant monitors. Okay, I hope you found that interesting, and I will see you next week for another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.